Looks like somebody's enjoying their jacuzzi. <laughs> you guys know that I love to keep things awesome for my animals. I love habitats and I love to build them. One of my favorite things to do with this channel uh, and in the past of being a reptile keeper is to go out and meet as many people as I can and see how they do things so it inspires me to do better for my animals. Well, today we're gonna go back to Australia a few weeks ago and I want you to meet my friend Joe Ball. Now, Joe is a really cool guy. I met him in 2014 and he recently moved to a new place and he's got some amazing setups. So I want you guys to check these out and get inspired because Joe is doing things so amazing out there. I think you'll be really pleased and you'll get a lot of cool ideas about how he keeps his birds and also Australia's largest monitor lizard, the Parenti. It, it, it's fun, man. This is my friend Joe Ball, and we are at his new place. I visited Joe back in 2014 when I came down here the first time, and it's such a treat to see him again. We're friends on Facebook. Um, what town are we in? We are in just outside of Cabulture, which is just south of the Sunshine and uh, North we're, Brisbane. We're meeting some of his fine feathered friends. As Brian's hanging out, and Dave's hanging out with us. This is our last day here in um, Australia, and what a treat to be able to catch up with Joe again. But this is a Latino macaw, otherwise known as albino. Um, but they're just beautiful. Oh, how marvelous. So let's walk out, because I think we're getting upset, right? Well, but, the other mutation there that. Okay, cool, yeah. for sure. I'd love to see that. This yes. is interesting. So you, you liked reptiles. I mean, you were always into it. You're always into reptiles, yeah, yeah. but just like birds. And now you've just bought this beautiful, I, I guess like a farm, man. I yeah, mean, it, it's a, a, a piece of property that we bought that was yeah. basically an enabler for me and the wife to go nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get whatever we want. Yeah, you know, his, so. wife, his yeah. wife's really into dogs and animals. And so now he's got goats and he's got birds. And look at, just look around and look at these beautiful aviaries. So what happens is the birds are inside, he can shut these rolling doors, but there are also outside aviaries that all you gotta do is just throw the doors up and we're actually gonna see one in here. But what's cool is if there's any kind of uh, inclement weather, then he can go ahead and just... Noise control too, because okay. these are very, very noisy animals, especially when you've got 11 okay. blue and gold macaws all going off at 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I it guess It means that I can let them out when I want them out at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning as opposed to them controlling me um, wow. when I don't want them to. Right, you got yeah. it. So here are, who are we looking at? This is a, a, another mutation of the blue and gold macaw. It's an opaline. So similar to the Latino, but this is a, a sex link mutation. Okay. So, um, oh my God, look at those wings. Yeah. I'm sorry, I get excited. I'm, I'm a little colorblind, but I can see uh, the yellow, burnt yellow, like almost orange, and then that, is that a blue, the blue tips on the wing? Yeah, it's blue oh my and, God. And, and deep yellow, which sort of gives sort of an orange luster to it. So yeah. incredible. And you were mentioning that um, years ago, um, the exotic bird community here in Australia lobbied well. Yeah, they, can... they, they, fought, they, they, they fought, a, fought a fight, if you like. And in Australia, we're, we're allowed to keep exotic birds. Um, we're not allowed to keep exotic reptiles, wow. go figure. Yeah. But this is a, a, an example of the stagnated government policy, state to state, which is basically immovable right. in regard to changing legislation. But back in the day, when some of that legislation was fixed, the birdos had a few people in high places cool. and were able to get it um, going. Crack the nut, so to speak. Now, these guys, you said they know you, but they're a little bit wary of new people, right? Yeah, I, if, if I came in here, well, as I'd come in here in the morning, they'll land on me and take nuts from me, but wow. seeing as you're here, they, yeah. they, they little just concerned. don't like strangers. Right, you know? but let's yeah. have a look at this. Uh, I want to show you guys these enclosures because these would work for reptiles. Um, these are beautiful. You know, he's got the footing down here, uh, concrete footing, and then the steel is anchored into the footing, or aluminum. I don't know if it's aluminum or steel. Steel, steel. Yeah. all right. And then, but look, this was the really, this was a really brilliant idea, mate. So he's got a track, just just like a regular old. Yeah, it's just just so you guys can kind of get an idea. 
how cool this is. Um, just a very simple idea to keep the animals confined inside. But look at this, he's right there. He's gonna go and lower it. And he does it nice and slow. So what do you got? Look at this. I love it. I absolutely love that, yeah. So you guys can kind of see that even when it's lowered and they're inside, these guys are gonna have plenty of room to move about and do their thing. So, I mean, this is, I gotta tell you, this is like one of the nicest aviaries I've been to, uh, privately owned. This and is incredible. Need to do is put nuts in there. Hold on, I gotta see that. They'll fly in and shut the door. So let's see, he just said all they you gotta do, do. They will dance with nuts. They'll do. So um, the only time I give them nuts is when I want them to do something for me. Okay. So I just put nuts in there in the afternoon, I fly in, they eat the nuts, and then you shut the, shut that, the door. That's brilliant. And then you have peace and quiet till you want them out again the next day. Yeah, yeah this, this whole thing is just beyond right now. I don't know, I, I see it, I get ideas, I know you guys, Love to see um, different enclosures so you can kind of, just kind of use your imagination and kind of repurpose it. That's part of the reason I love to do these videos because by meeting other people who do things correctly, it'll give you good ideas. Um, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, my gosh, I can do, I might, I don't know, some, I'd say steal ideas, but uh, I think we're sharing. Sharing's caring, right Joe? <laughs> I was lucky because the shed was already here. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't go to this extent to put up a big, sh I mean, there's just a concrete slab in here is yeah, exactly. 20, 30,000 dollars worth. And then the shed on top, it was built right. for a purpose for sort of uh, agricultural right. ideas. And I I've sort of bought the property and it was useless to me for that purpose. So yeah. it it's, it's had an animal. Would you mind if we saw some of your reptiles? We can go and do that next, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. that'd be great. All right, guys, we'll see you in a moment. We're gonna go see some reptiles next. Um, Probably not the smartest way to do it because the, the, the wild stuff just, just goes on Wonderful. its way again. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, we're chatting up here, catching up. He's got, filling me in on all sorts of good stuff, but hey, how about a little monitor food? So we were just talking and last time I was in Australia, you were keeping a bunch of different monitors and um, now you're only keeping your parentes. Why is that? Oh, well, parentes were, were always my love. I did have this sort of fixation with keeping Australia's biggest four varanids okay. and I sort of pursued that for a few years and um, in the end it was it was always the perenni yeah. it's me and the perenni you okay. know like and I've had breeding success with those guys so we've got babies here today to see and I suppose some of the the, the, the perenni babies have replaced the need to keep some of the other species too because, um, why part with your babies yeah you exactly yeah, yeah this is so cool so who are we going in to meet right now this is um my, my big boy. Oh, look at this. Well, oh, he's ready. Um, oh, hold on. Trigger warning, we will be feeding uh, varanids, which are carnivores, food. <laughs> Carnivorous food. Here we go. Let me get on in here, man. All right. Can I just want to squeeze in there? Oh, my God. Look at that. And so he'll, he'll uh, swallow that down whole. Can I get in there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's sort of... What do you think? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Man. Is it all right? No, I just He's didn't... He's a young male. He's not full size. He's okay. one I've produced. Oh, really? How old is this animal? He's about three years. He's three years old. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. So he's... he's He's a capable adult, but he's not full adult size. He's like a, a an 18, 21 year old sort of um, hot headed uh, young guy. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah, well, he's got the wrong end. So he's going to have to figure that out, guys. I tend to give him something like that. So a bird for something like that of that size is good because it gives him something to do. And he, he, he play around with it for a while till he can get it in there. And it's got all those feathers and all that other stuff, you know. It's, if you give him too many rats, they're full of fat. And, gotcha. You know. have varied diet, guys. That's yeah. something we've always talked about, especially with animals like this. The... Uh, the monitors are so highly intelligent, and, and as uh, Joe was just saying, you want to really give them something. Oh, look at this. Here we go. He's going to have no worries there. He's going to. Once he gets the head in. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I'll just give you a little bit um, on the, the concept of what's going on in this cage. Okay. Um, if you, you can see that 
the, the parentheses underneath a trailer. Yeah. Now this trailer, I found this on this property when I when I moved in. It was just dumped here, and my initial thought was, oh, how am I going to get that to the scrap heap? And um, then I thought, you know what? That's going to make a good ornament inside uh, a goanna cage, and it actually works really well for, for 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 this guy to move around and control his body temperature. On a hot day, he gets right underneath the trailer and keeps cool. So it might be 38, 39 degrees. And then on a cool day, on the winter's day, he'll just sit right on top of the trailer there and bask. So it sort of enables him to uh, be who he is. Yeah, like. yeah. And, it, and it has a really cool, it's almost like it's an old outback station. Yeah. And there's a parenti just exactly wandering right. by. Yeah. Uh, I really love it, man. And, and I love what you did in the back here. You know, guys, it's, it's little things that the keepers do. Uh, remember, this is not just for the animals, it's for us too. And it's fun when you, I love designing enclosures, yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I really do. And, oh. and that was the goal here. Once that trailer was in place, exactly as you say, it gave that outback station look. I yeah. thought, well, what, what, what's the, what, what backdrop could I give? So yeah, there we've got the kookaburra in the tree, the kangaroo there, and sort of. I love this. Yeah, it just gives that complete Aussie look. And yeah, it's great. This guy deserves it, you know. He's, he's, he he's, does. He's, he's Australia's biggest, most impressive varanid. And um, I reckon he's got Australia's most impressive varanid cage too. Oh, all right. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know, the, the other cool thing is, if I remember correctly, you're an immigrant to Australia, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a palm, as the Aussies would say. So I'm a prisoner of Mother England. <laughs> and I escaped from... Um, from England and I, I fly my trade here in Australia so very good I've been in nearly 20 years okay and, yeah um, yeah well you know you could have had you could have had the uh, bad weather and worse food now you've got the good weather and uh, pretty darn lobsters the size of your head if yeah you want. that's that's it. not yeah. a bad trade-off yeah yeah there's um, not or many, not many downsides to my no trade. I don't think yeah. so uh, yeah. or you can be the parenti and you can have this nice piece of chicken so as you can see, what's his name again? What's this lizard's name? I Joe? haven't named him. Oh, you haven't? Okay, yeah. I do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, well, why don't you guys you give Joe some ideas in the comments below? He'll have a look at this I video. I haven't named him, but he is one I produced, you know? And, oh. and I've kept these guys for some years. And um, I suppose that's what happens when you breed reptiles for some time. Yeah. You well, don't, you some don't always give them the, the warm, fuzzy name. But, yeah, um, that's true. Well, I do have... Um, you know, my big water monitor, Slinky, and then I've got Lagatha, the croc monitor, and a couple other monitors. Um, I, I do actually have a Mertens, Joe. I have an Australian yeah, yeah. species, a pretty psych. Yeah. Oh, look at this, he's gonna get that. They'd be quite hard to get hold of over there. They were, yeah, but yeah. Um, I was very fortunate because someone who watches the channel was, had one and sent it to me, and um, mm -hmm. just a beautiful animal. Got it set up. This is a, a, a good little video for you to to capture him eating because I actually hand picked the chicken so that it is a little bit bigger than he can handle just so it, <laughs> it it's a little work and you know some people would probably be like oh that's not good but listen these animals will overtake larger prey in the wild and this is a good way to kind of enrich them which again you know monitors need enrichment they're yeah, highly oh, intelligent look, and you could give it a wrap that's easier for it to swallow but it's got way more fat content and right. weight and the rat could weigh more than the chicken and it would eat it in a heartbeat because of the shape of the rat but you see a chicken like that for a monitor it's harder to eat it's got the head it's got the wings and all that and it, it really is an all-round better better exercise for a goanna to eat something like that than a than a, a big fatty rat that's yep. sort of been retired from a, a, a breeding <laughs> colony of rodents if you like yeah and now he's also going to have the benefit of all the bone and sinew there'll be some protein but also quite a lot of um calcium in that chicken so when they eat a whole prey item varanids are actually going to digest pretty much everything except the feathers look at this guy he is a beauty i i do i love this man i love the way you've got this set up We're almost done here. He's almost there, so I just want to keep on getting footage of him eating. Eat the that's eat real, you know. In the exactly. wild, that, they, they're not going to be able to go out, pick something that's exactly the right size <laughs> for them. They've got to get, 
Yeah, that guy would run as fast as a, an Olympic sprinter and bring down a bird like that and then spend all afternoon figuring out how he's going to get it in his gut. Well, yeah, you bring up a good point. Let's look at, let's look at the body type of this animal. You know, um, what, the first thing I know is about Parentes is they look athletic. They are the runners of the monitor world. Oh, mate, and this guy, especially the age he's at, like if you find a six, seven-year-old male Parenti, it's been in captivity. He's probably twice as heavy, probably another 25% longer, and he's been moderately slow. Yeah, you know, yes, at feed time he's going to be pretty quick, but um, this guy, on the other hand, he, he he is your worst nightmare. You know, if you if 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 you've got food in your hand and you get yourself positioned incorrectly and he's running, you, you're in trouble. It's great. This is, you know, this is why I love doing these videos because, you know, you get to see some natural history right here, uh, some ecology, the way the animal moves, the, the way the animal um, eats. It's so important as keepers to see how other keepers do it because uh, obviously you've had a lot of success since you've been breeding them. How many years have you been breeding uh, Parente? Oh, I'd be seven, I Seven years? Yeah. Very cool. He's almost there, folks. We are getting there. Look at this. Oh, good boy. Yeah, he's there now. Oh, that's it. Yeah, look out. Now he'll just do the little S's with his neck, and he's going to push that bird right into his belly. And how, when's the next time you're going to feed him? With this guy, because he's a male, I tend to keep him lean and mean too. So I like to give him a meal like that, just as we've, we've gone, gone through and described with its balanced nutrients and so on and so forth. I'll probably give it another week. Yep. I mean, he'd be ready again in three days' time, but... You know? There you go. Let's um, just see him disappear. One little claw. There it is. See, as you can see when you look at him, there's not a scrap of excess. Oh, no. This yeah. is a, yeah, this that's, is a lean animal. That's one of the things that, um, you know, is easy to make the mistake. You know, you see these animals and uh, people overfeed them uh, in captivity. And I did that too. Yeah, we've yeah, all made mistakes. Seven years in, I definitely don't do that. Gotcha. Know? Like, uh, yeah. I want this go. guy to be athletic, I want him to be fit and healthy. Um, yeah, he's probably unhandleable on a hot day. Right. Well, in general, he's unhandleable, but, you know. Uh, hey, he's listen. A, he's, a, he's a breeding animal, yeah. and I want him in tip-top condition. Well, he's beautiful, and that was, a, that was quite a sight. I just watched a Parenti take down a nice big chicken. Uh, and my gosh, what a beautiful animal. So again, doesn't have a name. So if you folks want to help us out, I know that... Uh, Joe will be watching this video, so maybe he'll read some comments and we'll have a name for this bloke here. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to end it right there, folks. He's got plenty more beautiful parentes, but you know what you're going to do? I want you to go check out some of Brian Cusco's video. There he is. Hey, Brian. I'm sure you're going to have some video of this guy eating. So if you guys want to see the rest of Joe's lizard collection, why don't you go check out my buddy Brian's channel. Where can they uh, check out your channels, bud? Uh, you just look up Brian Cusco, it's B-R-I-A-N-K-U-S-K-O on YouTube and you'll find all the videos I do there or Triple B-TV. See an interview with Kenan that we might be able to do before we leave this place. That'd be great. All right, guys, thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Joe, thank you very much, buddy. It's always a pleasure to come visit you in Australia. I'm um, looking forward to the next time. Wow, what an amazing trip. Uh, Thanks to you folks. I really appreciate you guys getting excited for all these videos. And um, I'm just going to kind of walk around and enjoy my last day in Australia. Bittersweet. See you.